Courageous captains of the keyboard, this is Prof G, and it's time to learn how to send key presses and text to your computer from your microcontroller using CircuitPython. And after the challenge, we'll even play a little bit of the Google Dinosaur game with a keypad made of vegetables. Let's dig in. So we're about to use CircuitPython to let a microcontroller act like a keyboard, and we'll learn to write code so that inputs in the microcontroller, like button presses or capacitive touch detection, will act like keystrokes in strings typed from the keyboard. Now, using an electronics project as a keyboard can seem like alchemy, but it's a great way to create all sorts of projects, like a game controller or an assistive tech project for users that find conventional keyboards challenging. Now, when we control a mouse or a keyboard, we're referring to controlling an HID, or Human Interface Device, and Adafruit has baked HID support into CircuitPython. Now, here's a block of code that you can use like a software Lego that you can copy and paste into projects anytime you want to set up basic HID keyboard support. You'll import USB underscore HID, and also use all three of these from import statements to import keyboard, keyboard layout, and key codes. Then we'll set up the keyboard and indicate the keyboard layout with these two lines. Now at the time that I'm recording this video, there's only a layout for the standard US keyboard available. Now this shouldn't be a problem for sending individual characters and strings, you just put any of those in between quotation marks, but if you need to send any special characters, there may be some differences between your keyboard and the standard US keyboard layout. So feel free to check online documentation and consult the Adafruit forums and Discord if you need help in working with non-US keyboards. Now one of the things you're likely to want to do with HID is to send individual characters and text. Now if you can type those characters between quotation marks, you can do that with this statement. We'll refer to the layout that we created up here, and then we'll use the dot write method to send any string we want to type out. Just put it between quotes. Now the other thing you might want to do is to send characters that can't otherwise be included between double quotes. Maybe you are coding a game that uses the four arrow keys up, down, left, and right, for example. Well, for that, we refer to the keyboard object that we created up here. Ours is called KBD, and we call the object's dot press method, passing in the key code of any character we want to press. Now, notice that I have key code dot up arrow in here. Now, what this is going to do is send an up arrow key to your keyboard. So this statement has the same function as typing the up arrow on your keyboard. Now, Adafruit has created a bunch of constants in the key code library that you can use for common keyboard keys, and you can find these by searching for Adafruit underscore HID dot keyboard circuit Python library. And when you open up this document, just scroll to the section showing key codes, and you can see that Adafruit has easy to remember names for most common keys. Now, since it's possible to press multiple keys at once, say you wanted to press a control key plus a keyboard character, you can send more than one key together simply by adding more than one key code inside of the press methods parentheses. Just separate any key codes by a comma, and you can send up to six different key codes at once. Now one more thing to remember, when you're done using the press method, you also want to call the keyboard's release underscore all method. That'll remove any existing keyboard presses. If you didn't do that, the keys that you sent via the press method might seem like they're remaining pressed down. So now that we got the basics out of the way, let's code up an example together, and then we'll have a challenge. So in this example, we're going to use a circuit playground blue fruit, and this also works with an express, to send a return key to the computer if we press button A and button B together. So those two buttons pressed, that's the equivalent of pressing return on your keyboard. Press just button A, and we'll write the string, you are awesome. Press button B, and we'll write the string, fabulous, that's you. Now we'll code this in Moo, we'll save and run the code, and then we'll open a Google Doc just before we press any of the buttons. Then when we press the buttons on our CPB, we should see these characters or strings printed into that Google Doc, just as if we were typing them on the keyboard. Let's give it a try. So I'll start with a comment, lesson 19, key presses with the Adafruit underscore HID library, and I'll import the libraries that I need, import board, comma time, comma digital IO, comma USB underscore HID, and then we'll use from statements for the next three, from Adafruit underscore HID dot keyboard, import capital K keyboard, from Adafruit underscore HID dot keyboard underscore layout underscore US, import capital K keyboard capital L layout capital U capital S, and and sorry folks if you're from outside the US, only the US keyboard layout is available at the time I'm recording this. Then from Adafruit underscore HID dot key code, import capital K key code. Then we're going to define our keyboard object, and we'll call this KBD, and we'll set that equal to capital K keyboard passing in USB underscore HID dot devices. Now we'll also create our US keyboard layout, we'll call that layout, and we'll set that equal to keyboard layout US, passing in KBD, that's the keyboard that we just created, and then we'll set up our buttons A and B in the same way that we've done them in previous exercises. 
Hopefully this is familiar to you, but if you need to, you can go back and review one of our earlier videos. And we'll say button underscore capital A equals digital IO dot capital D digital capital I in capital O out. And we'll pass in board dot and in all caps button underscore A. Then with button underscore A that we just defined, we'll say switch underscore two underscore input passing in pull equals digital IO dot capital P pull dot and in all caps down. And so sorry, I almost missed my underscore between button and A here. Then to set up button B, I'll copy these two button A lines, paste them down below. I'll just replace the A in three locations with a B. So now I've got my button B set up too. Then we can start our while true loop. Now to check to see if both buttons are pressed at the same time, we'll say if button underscore A dot value and button underscore B dot value. Remember, both of these things are true if both buttons are being pressed at the same time. Make sure you add your colon. And then indented under this if statement, we'll call the keyboard object KBD. It's a dot press method. And we're going to pass in capital K key code dot and then in all capitals return. That's going to press the return key if we press both these buttons. Now we also have to make sure that we do a kbd dot release underscore all with open and close parens. Remember to use that every time you use the press method, otherwise your keys will remain pressed. And then under this we'll outdent and we'll respond to the button a press. So l if button underscore a dot value colon. Then to write out text we just use the layout object that we created. That's our keyboard layout us object and we'll use the dot write WRIT method. And in parentheses, we'll pass in the string, you are awesome. And below that, we'll outdent, we'll do an L if button underscore B dot value colon. And underneath this, we'll say layout dot write, just as we did above, but in between parentheses, we'll pass in the string, fabulous, that's you. And just to make sure that we can properly detect one press versus another, we'll outdent and we'll say time dot sleep, and we'll pass in two tenths of a second, 0.2. You can play with the time if you find that you've got too much time in between presses, but if we didn't add any time delay in here, you'd probably find that it wasn't accurately detecting the button presses. Now let's save this to our CPB. We'll open up our serial monitor, save again. We don't have any errors, and let's try this out. So hopefully you can see what I'm pressing in here. First I'll press a B. We've got fabulous, that's you. I'll press them both at the same time. We get a return. I'll press... Both again, another return, press A, you are awesome. Press B, fabulous, that's you. A, you are awesome. Press them both for a return. Press them both for another return. A, you are awesome, and you are awesome. You have mastered HID keyboard input in Circuit Python. Nice work. Now time for a challenge. In this challenge, I want you to craft your own keyboard using all seven capacitive touch pads on your Circuit Playground Blue Fruit. And hint, you learned how to set this up and respond to capacitive touch presses in our CircuitPython school. You've got the beat lessons. You can go back and check that if you need a refresher. Now I want you to set up the key so that all seven capacitive touch keypads respond to presses. So that's A1 through A6 plus TX, and they should generate the following keyboard presses or string values. So up arrow, down arrow, return, space, the letter A, lowercase b, and for the seventh one, the phrase, this is cool. Now you can test this by opening up a Google Doc like we did before and moving around. And also, why don't you search for the Google Dinosaur game and play it with your capacitive touch pads? Because as you can see it right here, I'm playing the dinosaur game with vegetables. Oh, <laughs> now you definitely have enough skill to complete this. It is a challenging challenge. You might find that you're relying on a bunch of if, l, if statements based on what we've learned in CircuitPython school so far. But when I show you my solution, I'm also going to introduce a couple of new techniques that will help you write even more efficient code. So why don't you give this a try? Pause. I know you can do it. And resume. And let's compare answers. So this challenge doesn't deal with button A and button B. I'm going to delete this code and I'm going to set up the different key codes and strings we're going to use. And I'm going to put those in a list called keys. So I'll say keys equal open bracket. And the seven elements of this list are the keystrokes or strings that we're going to be sending out for each of the cap touch pads. So that's going to be key code dot up arrow, comma key code dot down arrow, comma key code return, comma key code space, comma in quotes capital letter A, comma in quotes quotes lowercase letter b and the seventh element is this is cool exclamation point make sure that all of your strings are between double quotes and make sure that you end your list with a closing square bracket 
And now we're gonna set up an array of touchpads the same way we learned how to do this in the You Got the Beat video. And I'm gonna create a list called pad and that's gonna have the location of all seven touchpads. So I'll say pad equals and in brackets board.a1 comma board.a2 comma board.a3 comma board.a4 comma board.a5 comma board.a6 and comma board.tx. There's not an a7, it's a tx. Make sure you close the square brackets. Then we're gonna create an empty list named touchpad Sorry, the comment wrote touchpad underscore A1 because of code completion. And the way that we set that up is touchpad equals and then just an open and close bracket. So the list is empty. But now what we're going to do is we're going to loop through all of the elements of this pad list. And we're going to create a touch in object appending each of those touch in objects to our touchpad list. So by the time we're done with this, we will have a list that has all of our touchpads and that will be called touchpad. And so now what we'll do is we'll loop through all of the elements in pad. So we'll say for i in range, in parentheses, len, in parentheses, pad, close parens, close parens, colon. And then in the next line, we'll say touchpad dot append. That will append or add a new element to our initially empty list touchpad. And then in parentheses, this is the statement that creates that touchpad object. It's touch io dot capital T touch capital I in. And in parentheses, we're going to pass in pad in brackets I. And remember what that's going to do is it's going to pull up the specific location of where that touchpad is. Close with two parens and we're good. Then I'll delete this extra white space and I'll give myself some space in while true. I'm eventually going to delete all of the code inside of the while true, but I'll leave this here just in case I need to refer to any of the commands for press release or write. Now, first, let's create a for loop that's going to loop through all of the elements of the list touchpad, and we can check to see if any of those touchpads are being pressed. So we'll say for i in range in parens len in parens touchpad, close paren, close paren, colon. And on the next line, we check if that particular touchpad is being pressed with if touchpad in square brackets i dot value colon. That will be true if that particular touchpad is being touched. And if it is touched, we're going to send out that element of the keys list. That's the keys element that's at index i. Now, this is where it gets just slightly tricky, but I told you I'm going to show you this extra technique. And here it is. In the keys list, we know that we've got some elements that are strings. And if they're strings, we know we can use the layout.write method. But if they're key codes, then what we need to do is we need to use the keyboard.press method. So the way that we can check to see if something is is a string or not is we can use this new built-in Python function called is instance. So by saying if is instance all in lowercase all one word and in parentheses keys in brackets i comma str close parens double quotes this takes a look at element i in the keys list and if it is a string that's what the comma str does this is true. So underneath this, we'll say layout dot right and in parentheses, keys in square bracket I close with a paren. Else with colon, what we'll do is we'll say KBD dot press and in parentheses, we'll say keys and in bracket I close bracket close parens. So that issues the press for a specific key code. If it's a string, we do a write. If it's not a string, we're in the else condition, so we do a press. Now remember, after we do a press, we got to do a kbd dot release underscore all open and close parens. And I'll show you one more technique in here too, just to make sure we only press one key press at a time. We don't want repeated presses. I'm going to outdent and I'm going to enter a while loop that says while touchpad bracket i dot value colon. That is while this touchpad is being pressed, and I'm going to put a pass underneath this. So what this will do is it will just hang in this while. Loop loop until my finger is released from the touchpad. Again, this technique should ensure that only one keys element is sent per touch. So again, another really nice technique. We might have used time sleep in here, but this is even more accurate. Now we do want to add a time sleep at the end. You can increase the sleep time to lower the chance of any accidental presses in between keys, or you can remove the sleep time for faster key presses. I'm just going to put time sleep and in parentheses 0.2. Feel free to play with that time if you'd like, and you want to see how that changes how your code executes. Now I don't need any of this extra code that was here from the last example, so I'm just going to highlight and delete this. Then we'll open the serial console, we'll click on save, and oh, I've got an error in here. It says that there is no touch IO defined. Do you know why that occurred? Because I forgot to import touch IO, and I need that library if I'm using the touchpads. So I'll just head up to the import statements, and I'll make sure that I import touch IO.
Now I'll open the serial console, I'll save, I've got no errors. And now just a little bit of a heads up, I hooked up alligator clips to all of my capacitive touch pads, and then I raided the garden and connected those to vegetables. It's time to veg out, HID and CircuitPython style. So now with everything hooked up, let's open up a Google Doc and see if we can get our produce to produce. I'll squeeze a tomato, which is TX, and see, this is cool. I'll touch the cuke for a space, the zook for a B, cuke for the space again, Roma tomato, capital A, red pepper, return, tomato again, this is still cool, orange pepper, up arrow, mushroom, down arrow, and you can pepper and shroom for some up and down arrow goodness. Now let's see if we can use these veggies to play a game. Now before we play, I'm gonna to return to Moo and I'm gonna comment out the time.sleep right at the end. This is gonna ensure when I tap my vegetables that the keyboard presses and the string writes are gonna happen as quickly as possible, which is important for gameplay. Then I'll open the serial console, save my work, no errors. Then I'll hop to a browser. I'll search for a Google dinosaur game, pull up this version. And if you're unfamiliar with this masterpiece, if you press the up arrow, the dino jumps. The down arrow, he squats down. You can press the return key to restart the game. Let's go! So we got Pepper to jump. The game's rolling. Pepper! Pep! Pep! Keep jumping! Squeeze those veggies! Ho oh, ho ho! And Red Pepper will return. Start the game again. Mushroom's not doing much. Ho! Oh, gotta start again! So I don't know if I'm going to get any high score even without the veggies, but the veggies make it tough, but they are responding. And we can see we've got HID working, we've got gameplay happening, we've got vegetables, we've got capacitive touch. Circuit Pythonista, I hope you're feeling fabulous. Go make yourself a salad and keep at it. There's more goodness to come.